Now coming to our next topic, denial of service attacks. As you are most probably aware, a denial of service attack, or a DOS attack, attempts to make network or computing resources unavailable to legitimate users. Once again, wireless networks due to their very nature are extremely vulnerable to such attacks. Here we have listed some possible denial of service scenarios related to wireless LANs. Some of these relate to the physical layer like RF jamming and interference, and are usually conducted by means of specialized hardware devices like RF jammers. Other attacks are related to the management and control plane weaknesses in the MAC layer of the 802.11 wireless standard. These include attacks based on the authentication state machine of WLANs like DAUTH and disassociation attacks. Then we have some attacks that pertain to the collision avoidance features of WLANs, like NAV and CTS based attacks. Finally we have some attacks exploiting the power save mode on wireless devices. In our demonstration, we are going to attempt the DAUTH and CTS flooding attacks. Please consult the companion guide for this course, for more information regarding these attacks. Once again, the most effective countermeasure against these types of attacks are wireless intrusion prevention systems or WIPS. Other mechanisms like dynamic frequency selection etc. also exist. Okay, now let's start our demonstration with a CTS flooding attack. As we discussed in the earlier sections, CTS or clear to send frames are used in conjunction with RTS frames to regulate access to the shared wireless medium. When any station wants to transmit data onto the wireless air medium, it sends a RTS frame to the other party, which replies back with a CTS signal, indicating that the medium is clear, and the sending station may transmit data now. These collision management functions are regulated by the AP. Consequently, the AP is going to send a message to all other stations to hold their transmission until the current station is done. However, this means that an attacker can spoof CTS messages with a very high duration value, thereby telling all clients listening to the air medium to hold their transmission. To do this, we have captured a legitimate CTS packet originated from our AP. This packet has a duration value of only 90. Next, we have used a hex editor, like Bless, to edit the duration value from 90 to a very high value, that is 32,000. This editor was not available within Backtrack, so we used the app get install bless command to download and install this package. Now we are going to use the WPA supplicant utility to connect to our test Wi-Fi network, currently configured to use WPA and TKIP. Once we are connected, we are going to initiate continuous pings to any arbitrary host on the internet. The network is unreachable because our test AP does not have internet connectivity. However the important field to note is the ICMP sequence number. As you will see, once we will start the DOS attacks, there will be a gap in these sequence numbers due to lost packets. Once again, we will be using the Air Replay NG tool to conduct both of our attacks. The first attack will be based on the interactive packet replay attack option available in Air Replay NG. This is the command we are going to run. We are basically picking the modified CTS packet, the one with the very high duration value, stored in the CTS4.cap file, and then replaying it out to the wireless network using MUNO. The various parameters are used to match the usual length, type and subtype of CTS packets. Please consult the official aircrack documentation to learn more about these parameters. As you see, as soon as we have initiated the DOS attack using the MUN0 interface, which is the monitoring interface of my Alpha USB card, the client station, connected to our test network using the laptop's built-in wireless card, has been denied access to the wireless medium. This is our first DOS attack in action. Okay, let's stop our DOS attack and see if the client's connectivity is restored. Notice the gap in the sequence number for the ICMP packets. Next we are going to look at the DAUTH attack. We have already seen this in previous sections. In this case we are running the DAUTH attack against a specific client, which is the built-in WLAN0 interface of our backtrack machine, the same interface on which we are running the pings. Once again, the DAUTH attack has the same result. 
the client has lost connectivity. In this section we saw a hands-on demonstration of two kinds of DOS attacks. In the next video we will look at how we can attack the WPS feature available in WLANs.